Aside from Mrs. Astor, have you ever wondered how the other members of New York's high society lived? Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. Ambrose Lanfear Norrie's entrepreneurial spirit came to light in 1882 when he discovered the iron ore of the Gogebic Range. His discovery not only led to the inception of the Lorry Mine, but also played a pivotal role in birthing the town of Ironwood, Michigan. His business endeavors expanded as he held prominent roles in the Ohio Mining and Manufacturing Company and the Buffalo, Rochester, and Pittsburgh Railroad. Beyond the realms of business, Nori was a celebrated figure in New York society. From hosting lavish dinners with 100 guests to receiving a coveted Stradivarius violin from his dear friend, John Willing, Vincent Astor's uncle, Nori's life was brimming with opulence. The most elite clubs in the city proudly counted him a member, adding to his extensive influence. With his acceptance in high society came the expectation of building a mansion in Manhattan. He hired the architecture firm of Renwick, Aspinwall, and Owen to design for him a stately four-story limestone mansion on a narrow lot at 15 East 84th Street. Entering the mansion, you would pass through double glass and wrought iron doors to arrive in the vestibule, finished out with limestone walls and a tile mosaic floor. Next, you would be welcomed into the stair hall, where the carved wooden balustrade wrapped around a mezzanine. The double height ceilings continued into the Great Hall, where a massive limestone hearth allowed for cozy alcoves to be tucked away on either side of the fireplace. In the dining room, the ceilings dropped to accommodate electric lighting, with bulbs dangling from the pleated fabric. The hand-stenciled ceiling in the library became a dramatic point of interest as the rounded windows rolled to a point, slicing into the barrel-vaulted ceiling. Finally, the ballroom was meant to dazzle, with white wall panels decorated with gilded plaster festoons. The same fabric as the curtains was applied to each paneled section of wall, almost giving the illusion that the room was blanketed with covered windows. Unfortunately, tragedy struck in 1910 when Nori gave way to pneumonia. Later on, in the 1920s, the mansion was placed up for sale. By 1928, the site of the former mansion appeared unrecognizable. While it had not exactly been torn down, the interior was completely remodeled and the facade was bumped out to the street to create more interior square footage. What remains today is beautiful in its own right, but hardly a whisper of Nori's mansion lingers in the air. Which room is your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments section, and while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.